good evening everyone uh, at the outset i would like to thank uh, iscm hyderabad and apollo hospital jubilee health to provide the opportunity me uh, to come over here and uh, share my views on the role of echocardiography in icu so over couple of next uh, minutes i will take you through the basic steps of performing the echo uh, the windows the findings and at the last we will try to discuss uh, what, how to exactly do the uh, 2d echo and we'll try to draw the conclusion now coming to the topic proper echocardiography is the integral part of the icu management now gone are the days when the pure clinical uh, parameters were the deciding factors for the decision making of the patients now the, the the era has changed to the clinical radiologic evaluation or the decision making that too a, a some tool which should be handy should be instantaneous should be used then and there without any complication without any invasive methods and it should be repeatable with uh, like a simple technique now 2d echo uh, and ultrasound in icu stands uh, all these criteria of the requirement of investigation do not require any other invasive methods no sampling so and the learning curve in 2d echo or ultrasound is very very steep that's the reason the uh, minimum criteria for the residents working in icu uh, the the society has recommended the 2d echo and ultrasound to be the minimum uh, uh, skills required for them now coming to the 2d echo so in my previous talks my other speakers they have uh, very elaborately described about the uh, the physiology the science behind the pro ultrasound radiology now without wasting any time i will like to take you straight to the 2d echo evaluation of a patient in icu now the probe which is used is called as cardiac probe or a phase array that is it should be once to be very very clear now why the smallest probe the reason is the wave should pass between the narrow space of the inter intervertebral uh, intercostal uh, space between the two ribs that's the reason the phase array probe is used now coming to the windows or uh, the excesses there are five windows through which the heart can be evaluated now before going into the windows the positioning we need to have the sono anatomy of the heart according to the, the locations the most common and the point to start is a parasternal long axis view that is a flex view so the probe should, should be positioned in the fourth intercostal space on the left side of the sternum in case of female patient in the inframammary uh, region in the fourth or fourth or sometimes in the third space now this is the parasternal long axis so the probe should be aligned in the direction of the heart second position is or the second window is a parasternal short axis rotate the probe 90 degree so that the pointer direct to the left shoulder so now you can see the parasternal short axis now in this position the heart can show or the probe can show the transaction of the uh, heart in the subsequent slides we'll take in into the details how it look like and how to detect the abnormality abnormalities in uh, those windows next comes the subgeoid position again the pointer should be positioned towards the left side and it's the angle should be uh, towards the left shoulder okay now then next comes the apical four chamber and apical five chamber view apical four and five chamber though they are two windows position of the probe should be same only difference is the angulation so a uh, little bit of the theory theory uh, part now indication in icu any hemodynamical unstable patient if you are suspecting any aortic dissection like if the mediastinum is widened if you are suspecting uh, any trauma on a ventilator patients if you are suspecting uh, any uh, like a pericardial tamponade or patient having a new shock if you are suspecting pulmonary embolism to look the right side of the heart so to position the catheter guides and so many things so these are the simplest but it is not limited to these indications there are so many other indications for echo now what are the advantages again i have told you okay it is the fast to perform non invasive can assess all the structures like the wall the myocardium the wall pericardium the, the pericardial uh, effusion fluid anything 
do not require any other costly equipments okay to be added it's easier to learn it can be repeated as many times as you want so uh, it so these are all advantages now coming to what all structures you want to see if you are going to do a 2d echo now so uh, the examination should start in icu though it is a brief but it should be a systematic examination of the heart to complete first comes the the morphology of the atriums and the ventricles okay so the two atriums and two ventricles now what whatever structure you want to see you need to go to the specific window to see the exact valve and the atrium of the ventricle second comes the functions you can see the function of the left ventricle the right ventricle their pressures their flows so these are all calculated of the derived values then comes the morphology and the function of the valve okay so either in the 2d or in the uh, motion mode you can see the form structure of the valves and their movement and any other abnormality associated with them then comes the size of the inferior vena cava now remember inferior vena cava assessment is a part of the cardiac evaluation in icu it may not be a part in the routine 2d echo but in icu whenever you are evaluating the heart structure and function inferior vena cava uh, size and the respiratory variation is the integral part now without that examination your 2d echo or the cardiac evaluation should not be complete now once your cardiac and inferior vena cava uh, thing is uh, like evaluated then you need to go for detection of the pathology like detecting the air embolism uh, sorry detecting the pulmonary embolism or pleural fluid uh, or sorry pericardial fluid you need to go into details so uh, now this slide shows what are the different uh, windows i have already covered these things so like the plaques uh, second comes the parational short axis apical four chamber apical five chamber then comes the subcostal view subcostal window these are the areas now these are the, this is the graphic representation how the 2d echo picture should look like in the exact position now you need to be very well versed with the structures which you are going to see in the specific window now let's start with the parasnal long axis view in a parasnal long axis view the structures what all you can see you can see the mitral valve the aortic valve the left ventricular outflow tract and the left ventricle these are the structures along with it you can see the left ventricular function again we'll go into the details how to evaluate then four chamber view specifically to see the left ventricle and partly the right ventricle they again two chambers specifically for the left ventricle next comes the parasnal short axis view there are three positions you can see the parasnal short axis one is the apical mid ventricular and the basal view apical is you will see the complete left ventricle transaction and a part of the right ventricle mid that means at the papillary level you can evaluate the left ventricular uh, function any regional motion wall motion abnormality or if the right ventricular pressure is high then you can see a d separate left ventricle in contrast to a round left ventricle now same applies for the basal segment now uh, this slide this a, it's a picture of the left the parasnal long axis view you can see you hear the left ventricle lbot aorta rv and la now what are the derived things you can see here we can detect the cardiac function or the left ventricular functions what we need to do change your mode change your uh, 2d echo to m mode place the cursor at the entire part of the mitral valve and run it now you can see like a wave like thing one is at the end diastole and end systole difference in the length of the end diastole and end systole now all the 2d echo machines are incorporated with the software to calculate the ejection fraction from the area so personal short axis view again same thing applies the basal segment of the personal short axis view you can see here the tricuspid valve the right ventricular outflow tract and the aortic valve this is specific for this view apical four chamber view apical five chamber view apical four chamber view is specifically to see the left ventricle right ventricle and the pressure flow dynamic change in both the ventricles in a case of pulmonary embolism if the right side of the right ventricular pressure is high then you can see the changes in the intraventricular septum like the, the motion 
the shape and size that will be altered. Now, this is the subcostal view. Now, subcostal view should start from the liver because it's it's like uh, without any air. So your examination should start from the liver and slowly you can rotate the probe pointing towards the heart. So first you will see is the IVC. Then you can see the IVC ending into the right atrium or the RA. Now, what are we going to see in this uh, section? We are going to see two things here. The RA size and second is the IVC size, IVC collapsibility or IVC distensibility. In a mechanical ventilator patients, now IVC, IVC will be distended with inspiration. In a spontaneous breathing patients, IVC will be collapsible during inspiration. Now, if it is a mechanical ventilator patients, you need to see the distensibility index or the fraction change or the percentage change on with the with inspiration to expressions. If there is a more than 50% change, and if the diameter is more than 2.5 that or less than 2.5 that means this is a fluid responsive i'll take you i'll take you uh, to the, to those things extensively so uh, so they are the predictors of the fluid responsiveness now second there is some correlation between the ibc diameter then cardiac index and uh, of course the cbp now if the ibc diameter is less than 1.5 that it's it shows that probably IBC is empty. Then you see the collapsible or the distensibility index. If it is more than 50, then that is patient is fluid responsive. Second, if the di IBC diameter is more than 2.5 and the collapsibility is less than 15%, that means the patient is already fluid overloaded, the lungs are blithory, and heart is already on the top part of the Frank Stalling curve. And this patient may not respond to fluids. So this is ideal not to give fluid, uh, further fluid in these patients. Now, once your uh, the, uh, the left ventricular function is evaluated, then we'll go to the right ventricular function. Now, compared to the left ventricle, now how do we uh, assess the right ventricular function? Here, you need to keep in the four chamber view. Focus on the lateral uh, leaflet uh, of the tricuspid valve okay, and put on M mode. Okay, You can see there are two waves basically. One is E and A. Okay, One thing. Second, put on the base of the valve and put in the M mode. Okay, Now, you have to see the excursion of the uh, valve. Now, that is called as a tricuspid uh, annulus. Oh, like oh. that's called it a topsy, or you can see the uh, tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion. Okay, that gives the idea about how much the right ventricle is contracting in these patients. So, a rough number of 20 is considered the topsy of less than 20 is considered as the right ventricular dysfunction, a topsy of more than. 20, that means if there is adequate right ventricular functions. Now, again, it is divided into various grades 6, 20 to 16, mild 16 to 12, moderate less than 12 means there is a severe right ventricular dysfunction. So, that is, that is how the measurement uh, happens. Now, coming to the ejection fraction evaluation, there are two methods uh, which is commonly being used for uh, the left ventricular ejection fraction. One I uh, already discussed. Uh, in uh, uh, this uh, presentation second is the area measurement you can take in the in the four chamber view and calculate the left ventricular area and and diastole and end systole and the uh, 2d information will detect the uh, ejection fraction from the area area calculated now both the methods has their pitfalls if you are going in a personal uh, short axis or uh, and calculating the ejection fraction because the left ventricle is not exactly the cylinder, so it can give some wrong information in some patients. Now coming to the area, some authors, they conclude area calculation for, for the ejection fraction estimation is superior to the personal short axis view, but it has its own quality. So many times in ICU, simple eyeballing, seeing the, the uh, contractility of the left ventricle is sufficient to detect. If the left ventricle is contracting, then probably the ejection fraction is roughly more than 15, 50%.
then uh, this is one more picture if the left ventricle is, dis is distended that means there is a lv dysfunction you can see there is an enlarged lv uh, now coming to hypovolemia how hypovolemic patient uh, look in 2d echo a hypovolemic the patient uh, the heart will be looking hyperdynamic now the myocardium will be looking kissing so at the end of diastole the ventricle will be now the walls of the ventricle will be touching each other okay that's the picture of hypovolemia suppose your patient is in shock with this today echo now you can luxuriously give fluids to this patient next comes the pathology cardiac tamponade now cardiac the feature of cardiac tamponade that that means there is fluid around the heart that means there is a pericardial effusion and that effusion is uh, is obstructing the filling of the heart. That means at the end of diastole, if you are saying there is a contract lead of the RA or RV, that is a diagnosis for the tamponade. Now, cardiac tamponade picture, it may uh, look like this. Then coming to the, uh, you always need to see the LV and RV size. Always the LV is bigger than the RV. Suppose the LV is looking same as RV or it is smaller than the RV and if the interventricular septum is being bulged into the LV, now this is a classic sign of for, uh, pulmonary embolism. Now next comes the VTI, velocity time integral. This is very, very important uh, tool to assess the fluid dynamics or the fluid uh, requirement of a patient. So, VTI assesses the cardiac output of the patients. Now velocity time integral, that means the cross-sectional area Okay, and uh, multiplied by the flow velocity. It gives rise to uh, the cardiac output time. Now, what we need to do before fluid, after fluid, or before leg raising and after leg raising, we need to calculate, we need to see the VTI. And uh, the machine is integrated or calibrated with the software which calculated the VTI change or the percentage or fraction change in the VTI. Now let's see how the VTI look like or how exactly we should uh, measure the VTI. So <clears throat> put in a, a four chamber view. Okay, put your cursor in take an M mode. Okay, keep near the outer in the five chamber. So it's apical five chamber view. Okay, then change into M mode. You can see this uh, like the aortic flow. This is coming. That is means it is a uh, velocity time integral. Now you go into uh, caliper you calculate the area under these graphs that will give rise to the the vti graph so now vti gives a lot of information regarding the fluid requirement fluid assessment or endpoint of uh, assessment so now to conclude 2d echo is the integral part in icu rounds now whenever wherever your patients requires like the uh, assessment in shock assessment in a breathing difficulty patients. Now visualizing, direct visualization of the heart is the paramount effort. And uh, everybody working in ICU, they must be well versed with the 2D echo. So, I, so with this, I conclude my talk. I will be happy to take any questions, if at all anybody is happy. Thank you.